Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Bird Brain 66 with my co-host, Brian Bretz, either there on my left or my right out there in cyberspace, and Andy Teague here on the other side of Brian. This week, we're taking a look at uh, the 1999 McDonald's St. Louis Cardinal team set. This uh, set was actually offered in six card packs from the local McDonald's in the St. Louis area. And that's the only place you could get this. And, and also on eBay now, obviously, or wherever, card shops, wherever you can find these things. So I'll start out with, I'm going to just start out with this one just because it's not a player. It's Big Mac Land. And it's just an artist rendition of Big Mac Land. Obviously, that became famous after the 98 season with uh, McGuire busting out the uh, the record-setting season, you know, season that he had. And uh, there you go. Got the checklist. checklist on the back. And I almost grabbed the wrong card here. So in speaking of McGuire, I'm going to go ahead and just throw him up there because he's obvious, the obvious guy in this particular set. Unusual action shot from McGuire there. He did something really cool that year. He had 100, was it 147 RBIs and 145 hits that particular year. So that was something that uh, was uh, very interesting, you know, for a uh, player. And uh, on the back here, got a nice little inset photo, head headshot, and it looks like it's the same picture that's on the front. And I get the if I can get the glare off, hopefully you can see. There you it. Go. Got all his stats on there. So lift it up a little bit higher because you can see the McDonald's logo. Yep, there's the McDonald's logo and upper deck on there as well. And I, as I always say, I always miss upper deck because I, they always put out a quality product. So, Brian, what do you think about this particular set? So, great set. I'm not 100% sure what the reasoning was behind it. In, in the research that I did, it was kind of really at the last minute that uh, McDonald's jumped into this, and basically they mirrored this uh, set. It looks exactly like the Upper Deck MVP series from from. 1999. I don't know, maybe it was still Maguire mania after coming off of the 70 home runs in, in 1998. But uh, anyway, that, that was cool. And, and like you said, uh, you could go to McDonald's and depending on what, what you purchased, there was two different prices for the six card pack. It was like $2 and 49 cents. Or if you upsized, I think it was, or whatever the marketing gimmick was at the time, you could purchase it for a dollar ninety nine. In my research, I couldn't tell if there were any like uh, cards that were considered short print. Obviously, you know the one that everybody wanted was obviously Big Mac with what he did with the home run, home runs, and obviously Big Mac was a wonderful big sandwich that uh, McDonald's still sells. But um, you know the other interesting thing about the set. I'm trying to see if I I pulled him. Give me one second here. Is uh, Eli Marrero. Um, was really trying to um, make this ball club. And so, again, this is the 1999 set. Sorry, I still have mine in the penny sleeve. Let me take it out so I can get rid of the glare. So, you know, he's having – he's he's battling, trying to, you know, be a regular catcher, uh, battling Tom Pagnazzi, et cetera. And then I don't know if a lot of uh, Cardinal fans remember this or not, but uh, he missed the entire 2000 season – when he uh, went through spring training, did the um, annual physical, they found a mass in on the side of his uh, neck that he didn't even know he had. And it ended up uh, being cancerous. He had uh, thyroid cancer and uh, he actually missed uh, the entire uh, 2000 season because of that. I know that's one season ahead of what we're talking about, but uh, Eli was always yep. one of my favorite guys that I was pulling for. So, but um Anyway, I know you got some interesting uh, pictures that you want to talk about, and so I don't want to steal your thunder, but go ahead and jump in and maybe talk about one or two other favorite players, and then let's talk about your your transition that you were mentioning. Okay. So Put you on the spot. Uh, well, it was a kind of an interesting year. The Cardinals finished fourth in the National League Central, so what, nothing spectacular as far as the record goes or anything of that nature. I think they were like 21 and a half games out of first place that particular year at the end of the season. But this guy, you might know his son. This is the senior, Fernando Tatis. This particular year, he actually hit two grand slams in the in the in the first inning of a ball game, and I believe that was in uh, April of that April or May of that year. 
I remember I just happened, I was actually traveling and uh, it was, and I had happened to just turn the game on and the, and the Cardinals were going wild in the first inning. And like, and then uh, the T's actually wound up hitting two uh, grand slams, which is a phenomenal feat in itself. So and even two, well, you, the same inning is pretty phenomenal. Well, then what, one other little bit of trivia question here, you know, he hit the two grand slams in the same inning, which like you said, is a feat in and of itself, but it was also off the same pitcher. Cause it was, That's off, correct. It, was it was against the Dodgers and it was against, um, um, park, um, channel right, park. Yeah. Chan Ho park. And it was, and, and, so I, I forgot how the games went before it, but the Dodgers needed Park to Chan Ho Park to eat some innings. And it went, you know, obviously it went horribly wrong. And how I think there was a hit batter in there. I'm trying to remember how it how how the sequence worked, but how Tatis managed to come up with the bases loaded the second time. And I can just remember Shannon saying, you know, he could make it a nine right. ten whatever run lead and right after that the very next pitch was the identical pitch that he hit the first grand slam on uh park hung whatever it was fastball probably a off-speed pitch and he just absolutely unloaded on it and so yeah the trivia is two grand slams in one game two grand slams in the same inning and two grand slams the same inning off the same pitcher and it'll never it'll never happen again no, nope, you are correct. So, what? Who do you got in there? Who you got next? Oh my gosh! Um, you probably already know this. I'm, again, I, I forgot to pull mine out of the penny sleeves. Anytime we can always show our friend Willie McGee just the love affair and the love that he that the fans still show him as a coach today is just incredible. Such a humble guy, such a humble player. He would just absolutely frost your rear end with some of the swings and misses because you're like, Willie, you're swinging at your feet. The ball is bouncing off the ground. You're still swinging at it. And about the time you were totally disgusted with him, then he'd hit some monster, you know, shot into the gap. And the best thing I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to test your game or your uh, memory on the game that we attended, but it was, it was in 1983, I believe. And we sat in some spectacular seats uh, we were, we were, had our feet on the dugout of the opposing team and Willie McGee hit an inside the park home run and to watch. Right. The only other player I've ever wanted to see run like that. And, and I visited you when you were at Whiteman Air Force Base and we saw Bo Jackson hit an inside the park home run against the Oakland A's. And I don't know who was who was more fun to watch run the bases, Bo or Willie. But I mean, both guys could just flat out fly. Oh, yeah. and, it was just it was amazing to see see that speed. So always always love Willie. Always have great stories about him. What about you? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put up uh, Ray Langford because longtime Cardinal outfielder, really really good outfielder for the Cardinals, solid guy. And uh, oh, and speaking of McGee too, that '99 this this year was his last season as well. So just so. McGee appeared in a few card sets here and there, you know, around the '99 2000 season. But here we are, Ray, Ray Langford, you know, kind of getting no, near the end of the term, his term with the Cardinals, too. Uh, very big transition year, 99 going into 2000. And uh, that's something we'll get into on our next show. But uh, just point out some of these, I guess, Cardinal legends, as you, you know, have them, you know, I've had McGuire and uh, Mickey and Langford there so far. Who do you got? And so Boom Boom is in the, uh, in the uh, Cardinal. Uh, Hall of Fame. So here's an here's another guy that I like to give love to. He, we really didn't like him when he was with the Cincinnati Reds, and while well, we didn't have to face him when he was with the Orioles. But man, yep. his time with the Cardinals. This is Eric Davis, by the way, outfielder. Um, always had a lot of respect. I guess it was more of a love hate respect for him because we had to face him all the time with the Reds. But uh, this guy was a real pro. He's another guy that uh, battled cancer during his career and, and came back and just, you know, loved absorbing, you know, his final couple of uh, at-bats season and a half, whatever it was with the Cardinals and just love the, you know, how the fans accepted him after being a bitter rival. Well, he famously had to pay for his own flight too uh, when he was injured, I believe it was out in California and, and the Reds marge shot the owner at the time would not 
pay for his flight because he got injured. So, and, but it was, everybody knows from history, she was a terrible owner anyway. So yep. we'll just she was more to point in her that dog out and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put uh, this guy up because and the, the, the uh, Sean Dunstan, the only reason I'm putting him up is because the Cardinals and Cubs have had a long history of swapping players over and are signing players, or whatever, throughout the uh, years. And here's another example of that. Cause obviously this year we have Wilson Contreras. So here we had this particular year, we got Sean Dunstan. So you've just figured I'd throw out Dunstan for that, just that particular reason, you know, it's either, you know, Ben Suter or whoever Brock, obviously probably the most famous Cub to come and play for the Cardinals. So I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> well, bless you. Alex. Thank you. You know, what's great about uh, Sean, uh, Sean Dunstan is that uh, the comparison that uh, Mason Wynn is getting right now, um, talking about, I mean, geez, Louise, what did they, there's a, a Tops Now card last year where they uh, featured Mason as having, what was it, the hundred and, it was a hundred plus mile an hour throw from uh, across the infield over to first base. Uh, it was like the fastest throw of all of uh, 2022. I'm going to show this guy just because he, again, was with us during these transition years when uh, Jockety is really starting to, you know, make his mark. La is starting to make his mark, get the players that he wants in. Um, Ricky Batalico right now is uh, one of these guys that's uh, a part of the uh, uh, Philadelphia Phillies broadcast, and he is fun to pay attention to in the Twitter Twitter sphere. Twitter sphere. Uh, very opinionated. Uh, sometimes I agree with him. Sometimes I don't, but that's what's good about it. But I uh, wanted to give Ricky a shout out because I love uh, his Twitter feed. Okay. I got uh, Joe McEwing next. So everybody should know who this guy is. So, and that he had a, obviously another one of these guys, fan favorite, short stint, you know, guys like him, Stubby Clap, Rex Hudler, the list goes on and on, but they, when they were there, they did spectacular things for the, the short amount of time when they were there and made big impacts, you know, to, you know, with other players and to the team that during their time that uh, they were with the team. So just thought Big we, Mac and Little Mac, that's what we called them. That's and right. It, it, I forgot. It, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. So does it say it on the back of the card? Because I I wish I would have done my homework on him. I did. I did uh, pull his card. But remember, he had he started out with like such was it like a 20, 25 game hitting streak? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, it's not on there, but yeah, you are correct on that. I don't remember how many games it was off my head, but yeah, it was he, in the twenties. I do know that, and it was like one of the you know outside of what Jordan Walker did at the beginning of this season, you know, in, in you know very first game and stuff. But uh, Little Mac had quite the quite the hitting streak his uh, rookie season, and, and still is one of the top rookie hitting streaks and. MLB history. So shout out to him. Who do you got? Uh, who else did I have called out here? There was one other one. We There's several of them that we had that were together. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? I'm afraid to show him, but I will anyway, just because it's. I uh, will. I will if you won't, because I don't know. I know who you're talking about. Just always have to mention. Because that's who I, yeah. JD Drew, love him, hate him. Yep. He had a nice little career with the Cardinals and went on to play with some Red Sox and the Dodgers. Said, you know, I put, put right, and I think I'm correct on that. The Do it was yep. the Red Sox first and the Dodgers after that. Um, Just he, he reminds me so much, so much of like. Like uh, Colby Rasmus, I mean, these guys that just had tons and tons and tons of talent, but surrounded themselves with all the wrong people. And I don't mean that it was wrong people as in given bad advice. I just was, I just think there was too many non-baseball people that were giving them, you're better than this. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. And uh, when you have a sweet I swing, think, yeah, like, like JD did, you, you know, quit listening to people. It's like, let your natural ability and let someone coach you up so you can get better. But he had too many outside influences that, you know, Tony would try to give him some advice. Yes. Tony has, has always had a rap about not getting along with at first with young players, but Colby and, and, and JD was probably the first that I can recall in the Cardinal uh, organization when, Tony was leading the charge was they just, they just didn't see 
eye to eye. I mean, he he could he would hustle and he would give you everything. It seemed like for three games, and then well, it's a 162 game season. I'm going to take a few games off. And Tony said, "You can't do that with this fan base." And for whatever reason, JD never got it. And you know what could have been a, even a more prolific career. I just think that this was another one of these guys that uh, I used this in a tweet earlier about uh, our friend Jack Flaherty, the uh, pitcher. He was a legend in his own mind and uh, listened to too many outside influences on his greatness and unfortunately never untapped his natural ability because he was reading his own clippings too much. I agree. But uh, actually, J.D. had a little bit better career than Rasmus and some of those other guys, though. He was actually right. more talented uh, ball player. The last guy I got here, it uh, kind of leads me to what we did with the uh, 79 set where we had our trivia question with Gary Templeton and had anybody else had the uh, 100 uh, hits per uh, side of the plate, you know, left and right. And our buddy Alex out there responded with uh, Willie Wilson. So uh, thanks, Alex, for that. Uh, to, that way I didn't have to look it up because I was going to look it up, Just but uh, you took care of that for me. And so this week, so here's another uh, individual that the Cardinals had for a very short period of time. And as Brian and I discussed before, for whatever reason, they threw him into the starting rotation that particular year, and he had an outstanding year. So the following year, he would not be with the team. We would get a, 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 a Hall of Famer in return for this guy. And, and does everybody know who that is? We're not going to tell you this time, but we'll tell you next time. Or maybe Alex will tell us. Out on out in Twitter land, so we'll wait and see if anybody answers that question. And I would be remiss- Cardinal Hall of Famer, but Cardinal Hall of Famer, by the way, not not uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. Not uh, yet. Know, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention because last time we when we talked about the '79 set, always has some kind of try to have some kind of uh, pop culture or Van Halen trivia. So I missed out on the uh, Van Halen two album in 1979. So. What was your favorite song in uh, off the uh, Van Halen two album? We talked about this earlier. I love so many of the cover songs, um, and you're gonna you're gonna because I I get that messed up. I want to say "Dance the Night Away." That's your that's, okay. Is that I mean, am I right or is that not on? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's you're on. you're good there. Okay, I mean this I. I'm, so they're listen to me stutter I sound like I'm breaking up a little bit that's me intentionally trying to collect my thoughts on this so you know most bands don't like to do uh, cover songs and of course Van Halen obviously didn't but they needed material because it, their, their first album was so hot Eddie was just like this nobody had ever heard of anything probably like this since maybe Jimi Hendrix uh, just phenomenal with what he could do with with uh, Frankenstein, the guitar. And so they needed him to crank out albums. They wanted more time to write their own music. So they wrote the or they did these cover songs. And uh, I for one, just because between Dave's vocals and his showmanship and Eddie playing the guitar, I mean, I like Dance the Night Away. I love Pretty Woman. I mean, I they just took cover songs and and made them their own and and in an early interview with with diamond dave i mean i heard that you know we also want to be a dance rock band if that makes sense and by doing these songs even though he was screaming lyrics and michael anthony was you know very underrated and in his backup screaming and i don't mean he just screamed i mean he was a great backup singer for the band and then you had eddie playing the guitar and oh by the way there was this guy named alex van halen that was keeping everything together, keeping everyone on beat. Um, so, and, and I know that there's, a, there's, you're going to name a few more that, that I'm missing, but for whatever reasons, I've always loved Dance the Night Away. I'm going to say somebody give me and a you? That's probably my favorite off of the uh, yeah. Van Halen too. And as you mentioned, so nobody busts you up in Twitter, Twitter land. So uh, Pretty Woman was on Diver Down. So I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah. Because, no. Uh, yeah. Right. I I knew it wasn't on. I knew it wasn't on this one. But yeah, it's on. Yeah. Diamond. Well, I knew. But, uh, I knew you knew that, but just so people didn't understood that you were, you know, you were just talking about the cover song connection because you know, right. 
Yeah, the connection with the Kinks off a of Diver Down and off the first album, you really got me. And, um, where have all the good times gone? So just uh, and they had some albums where they didn't have any at all. So it, uh, it was a, it was kind of a mix, and they did a great job uh, picking that stuff out. So for '99, what I have for Van Halen. Well, they actually parted ways with Gary Sharon after they had a disastrous uh, experience. Not because of Gary, because they actually had a they actually remained friends after he left. It was uh, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers splitting them up at that point in time because of the uh, sales of the Van Halen Three album. And they almost had an mm-hmm. album complete in '99 when they uh, parted ways. So that material is, is rumored to be out there somewhere. Maybe it'll get released at some point because I just saw that. Uh, they remastered some other stuff. So who knows, maybe someday uh, Wolfgang will be able to get that stuff out, hopefully. But, uh, and also I think Eddie had his famous hip surgery in 1999. So that, and then they kind of went silent until Sammy uh, came back to the band in the early uh, 2000s there. So there's the Van Halen for this week. And, uh, and that's all I got for now. So you want to carry us out or throw us out of here? Well, I mean, I can do both. So uh, I'm just thinking about I do have uh, Van Halen three on on a on a CD. I'm trying to even remember. I think there may be one song on there. I mean, it, it's 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 them and Gary Sharon actually is a good lead vocalist. Um, so I'm 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 not knocking him whatsoever. I'd I'd actually l- would listen to it. Unfortunately, if you asked me to name a couple of songs on it. I don't because I didn't listen to it enough. I mean, we wore out cassettes and we wore out, you know, I mean, like, uh, you know, music. with or without you and Josephina and, you know, stuff, yeah. you know, a few of those ballot for the bullet and all. I, I think, you know, we're on that Van Halen three album and the, right. in, in the, in the infamous, uh, how many, how, how many say I, which people just uh, despise with Eddie playing the piano and singing. So, all right so there one last go. thing I'm, I'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you one one chance to shout out before we uh uh wrap up because our time is quickly diminishing so uh for those of you who don't know andy does have a replica of frankenstein um and you've been practicing guitar for many years and so i'm yes. gonna put you on the spot this is either a thumbs up or a thumbs down answer and you can go beyond that after i ask okay. this question so what Van Halen, uh, Gary Sharon songs have you mastered? Thumbs up that you have one or thumbs down that you have zero? That's a big thumbs down. Zero. I have actually zero. <laughs> as far as mastering any Van Halen songs of guitar, that's a big zero because it just, uh, I started late in life uh, learning the guitar and I uh, love it. I love, you know, playing it and, and thinking around on it and stuff and I actually learned how to play, you know, pretty well, but uh, just not well enough to, uh, that's a whole different level of playing. And I, I, that's a, that's to me, that's like a kids, kids pick that stuff up much better than adults do. So I just can never, I tinkered around with like Panama. And a few things here, you know, you know, oh, you really got me things like that. Cause you can, you can knock out, you know, something pretty basic on that. But other than that, no, uh, no, uh, Van Halen, a lot of Foo Fighters though, for me, I love playing the Foo Fighters. Uh, one of my, that's probably my, second favorite band and i remember it might be my first favorite band now you know because van halen's kind of been out of the picture so long maybe we'll do a top 10 bands one of these days just for fun there you go well we'll last music question since we're on the on the subject and uh so did you buy frankenstein or or was it a gift from a family member it was a like a compiled birthday gift uh for one of my milestone birthdays so that's that's how i got that guitar Cool. Uh, nothing like the it's it's a replica but not a replica of the uh infamous eddie guitar because it was just ba- his was just basically parts this is actually a straight up van halen model uh frankenstein so there you go nice so sorry everybody we missed that on the 1979 we uh stopped recording and we were both a little twerked off that we had material <laughs> to talk about and then we forgot about it so that's what happens when you become older men and you can't remember these things unless you uh, write down 15,000 notes on pieces of paper. But I, re- I really just that, try to remember. I just I like trying, trying to just remember it. If I don't remember, if I remember something incorrectly, you know, that that's just the way it is. We do it. That's and why we're, we have fun with it. And that's it. 
That's the most important thing. All righty, everybody. Well, we're going to wrap up this show again, talking about the 1990, 1999, excuse me, McDonald's upper deck, uh, 15 card, 16 card, uh, set so we appreciate you watching you can follow andy and i on so many different uh, social media channels this one of course is our youtube channel where he and i get on sometimes with guests norm Sa norm sanders tony schaefer mike claiborne tom ackerman brad ripplemeyer others who have been guests so we appreciate that steve porter i forgot him yeah. but um Anyway, we hope you follow us on Twitter at BirdBrain66, and there's a cameo, cameo appearance by my dog, and uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. So on that note, we appreciate you guys so much. I'm Brian Thanks. West. That guy there is Andy Teague or wherever he is. Right here. Later. Thanks.